Thank you so much, Christy. I appreciate it. And let me say that the faith-based development initiative started but was inspired by one a couple of people, one of whom is in this room, Kirk Goodrich. And I always acknowledge that he and Bill Fry were inspirations for that work. It is humbling to be asked to be here today. And I offer a few words that hopefully will serve as inspiration. So day became night and the sun was blotted out by the haze of fire and smoke. Babies were beheaded and women raped. Cities were bombed and mass graves were found and someone asked, which war are you talking about? Lies are sold in the body as truth in the body. Politics, strife and conflict have become money-making algorithms for social media companies. 48,000 people lost last year in this country to gun violence, 27,000 of those to suicide. Those whose ancestors were bought and sold as chattel, whose men were told that you are three-fifths of a human being, people whose elders, some of whom are still alive today, were forced to endure poll taxes just to exercise the franchise of the vote whose elders face legalized segregation and education and legalized discrimination in mortgage lending, who today still face bias in lending and health access and job hiring. Those people are told that we won't allow you to teach that entire history because it makes some of us uncomfortable. Large racial inequities in wealth and health and education and housing opportunities have become so entrenched that referring to them almost seems passe, almost. Black households with one eighth of the wealth of white households, white households twice as likely as their black counterparts to receive an inheritance. And when they do, the average is $104,000 increase in median wealth among white families, but only $4,000 increase among black families. In 2019, the median black household earned just 61 cents for every dollar of income of a white household. Hispanic households, 74 cents on the dollar of their white counterparts. Among those growing up in the middle 20% of the parental wealth distribution, black children are much more likely to be downwardly mobile, with 39% of them falling to the lowest 20th percentile than their white counterparts, where only 16% go downward. Home ownership rates for black families, roughly 45%. For white families, 74%. Below 80% AMI households represent 43% of black loan applicants, but only 31% of white loan applicants. Debt to income ratios are barriers for many minorities seeking a home loan, largely exacerbated by high student loan debt, which is twice as high for black families as for white families. Credit scores and evaluation of credit histories oftentimes stand as barriers, and blacks are denied loans at twice the rate of whites, unless we think this is just a problem of, uh, of colored folk and BIPOC families. One in five households in this country pay more than 50% of every dollar they make for their housing costs, forced to make toxic choices about essentials like food and medicine, and this includes 20% of all white households. And the severe cost burden are better off than the more than 580,000 people experiencing homelessness in this one of the richest nations in the world. Oh, and did I mention that there's $26 billion of deferred maintenance for public housing? Estimates on the gap of affordable homes ranges from 3.8 million by Freddie Mac to 7.3 million affordable and available homes for the extremely low income as put out by the National Low Income Housing Coalition. And in the midst of all of this challenging and scary news, with all of the isms, schisms we hear, the words Tracy, uh, Stacey Spann of Marvin Gaye, it makes me want to holler and throw up both my hands. And like the prophet Isaiah, we look for the repair of the breach and the restore of streets to dwell in. Is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free and 
that you break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out when you see the naked that you cover them and not hide yourself from your own flesh? So, Christy Smith, we are here today. The gathering of the Housing Affordability Breakthrough Challenge 2023 finalists, I applaud all of you. And if I may be so bold, Kirk, I would like to say that I think I'm in a room of folks who are trying to make the world a better place. A room full of innovators looking for ways to get past the status quo. So as Christy said, I was asked to come today to offer a few words of inspiration. So anybody who knows a preacher in good preaching school, you're always going to have three points. So here go your three points. Number one, infinite possibilities and finite time. Number two, know your role and play your role. And number three, what you do matters to people. So show up, come rain or shine. Infinite possibilities and finite time. We live with this tension of an amazing paradox. There are seemingly infinite possibilities for what we may do and the influence that we may have, and yet our time to do it in is finite. Listen, there's a crew of human beings who are circling 250 miles above sea level living in space. The Voyager 1 spacecraft launched by NASA in 1977 is still sending back images to Earth 46 years later. 14 billion miles away, 38,000 miles per hour, images of Saturn and Jupiter, a craft made by human hands. You want to see Mars, it's almost like a reality TV show. They're sending back images from Mars. We have submarines that are circling the globe with crews of human beings living down in the depths of the oceans. And from the pyramids in Egypt to the Freedom Tower in New York City, Medicines that can cure all kinds of diseases to the technology that allows us to build homes and actually bring water and power to them. And beyond the technological, we can love as human beings in ways that inspire beautiful songs. You are the seed and the grain of every harvest, planted in love by a being far beyond this. What can it be? Such a sweet yet painful feeling came over me knowing this can never be. Do I love you? Yes, indeed. Tina Marie. And poetry like this from Marie Evans, if there be sorrow, let it be for things undone, undreamed, unrealized, unattained, and to these add one, love withheld and restrained. And humans are amazing creatures. We have the ability to do so much and to be so many different things. And yet the clock is ticking from the day that we are born. Time is running out for all that may be possible to imagine and dream and create and to do and to be each breath that we take literally brings us closer to our end. I know this reality all too well. When I had to bury my brother in the same cemetery where I'd laid my parents, I had to buy a plot. And I was told they only come in twos. So they asked who was going in besides my brother. And I said, well, Doc, I'm paying for it, so you better put my name on it. <laughs> okay, so we get past that point, and then they tell me that the headstone has to be done now for both. What? <laughs> yes. So literally on my phone, I have a picture of the grave site where I will be buried, and there is a headstone there with my picture on it with a date of birth and a dash, and all that it's waiting for is my body and the date of my death. Now, that might sound morbid, but for me, it's not. It is a reminder to me that my run on this planet is limited. My time in this form and fashion is limited. So what is the takeaway? Redeem the time. Make the most of each and every moment, my friends, that we are like, dream big, love hard, work for justice, fight for what is right, do things that bring beauty to our world 
and to others, have transformational aspirations. One of the biggest challenges we have in our industry is small thinking. We are confined to the limits of what has always been done, cursed by what a professor of mine at Howard University School of Divinity called the sin of pragmatism, bound by a scarcity mentality. And I applaud every one of you in this room, all of the finalists, for being innovators, because innovation is hard, Christy is right, for looking for ways to go beyond what is and looking at what should be and what could be. A tip of the hat to Wells Fargo for funding the Housing Affordability Breakthrough Challenge and creating a space for innovators to dream and to get the work done with the right financial resources and technical support to explore and push the boundaries of what is possible. So thanks to all of you innovators and thanks to Wells Fargo. But this leads to my second point. Know your role and play your role. And no, I'm not Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Recently, after his team was booed by fans, New York Giants offensive tackle Evan Neal said, why would a lion concern himself with the opinion of sheep? The person that's commenting on my performance, what does he do, flip hot dogs and hamburgers somewhere? There was much hullabaloo over the comments on sports talk shows, and he soon issued an apology. It reminded me of another one of our great challenges that we have in our field, my friends. There's not enough open and honest conversation. Mr. Neal made that oh-so-fatal mistake. He said out loud what he was really thinking. He sees himself as a lion. Now, in the animal kingdom, lions are predators and strong and rulers of their lamb and sheep are prey, weak and in need of protection. And it got me to thinking, Kirk, about a, another scripture in the Bible where Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep, but a hireling, who, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them, and the hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. My friends, we all need to know our role and play it. At times in our lives, we may be the sheep, we may be the wolf, or we may be the shepherd. But let me offer for our consideration today that for those of us who are in this line of work, any of us in the line of work where we are actively trying to help people, especially people who may have fewer resources or power in the sense that the world sees it, we are playing a shepherd-like role. A role to look out for folks, to help them live safely and realize their full potential while being protected against the wolves in our world. And make no mistake, there are wolves in our midst. They show up as individual people and individual acts. They show up as mindsets that would keep some people down and exclude them from opportunities. They show up as systems that literally are designed to work for some and against others. Some will refer to broken systems when they hear some of those statistics that I started my remarks off with. But another point of view is, uh-uh, player, the system ain't broke. It is doing exactly what it was designed to do benefit a certain group of people at the expense of others. The system ain't broke. It's well-oiled, and it's been working for generations to get us to where we are today. There are wolves in our midst. Sometimes they get caught, and sometimes they get exposed, and sometimes they get punished with a little, you know, fine or a little slap on the wrist. But oftentimes, the wolves go unchecked. And whether the individual or the corporation or the unjust system is at play, we live in a world where wolves prey on what they perceive to be sheep. And we need to ask ourselves, what role are we playing in our jobs and with the work that we do? Are we a wolf or are we a sheep or are we a shepherd? And acknowledge that role and then play it. If we are to be shepherds, I offer from the lesson from the words in scripture that we must be more than just hired help. Of course, we don't own the sheep, but we have to have maximum impact. It has to be more than just a job for us. It should be a vocation, a calling, 
Perhaps in our modern day work context, being willing to give of our lives for the sheep may mean a willingness to devote our time and our energy wholeheartedly with courage and conviction. Only then will we not wilt in the face of the wolves. We don't run off when a wolf says boo. We won't allow our righteous indignation to be silenced by a grant or an invitation to sit on a board or come on and sit up front at the gala. And then we say, oh, I can't say nothing to the wolf now because I'm in the front row. When we play our role as the good shepherd, we are looking to press past the resistance of status quo thinking. The threats of being seen as radical. Oh, I don't want them to say I'm radical. Or I don't want them to say I'm too pie in the sky. We press past that apathy and the indifference that allows us to live in a world of so many frivolous pursuits while so many of our fellow citizens languish in constant struggle and daily traumas and slights. And to be mindful that if we are at the gate and supposed to be watching out for the sheep, if we don't play our role but continue to stay in that position, that is when the okie doke can happen and the sheep get snatched because we are not playing our role. Folks ask, how could that happen? Oh my Lord, clutch my pearls. How could this happen? I tell you how it happens. It's when the shepherds aren't doing their work, but the wolves are still on the prowl. As good shepherds, we have to be vigilant and courageous, fight for just appropriation levels by the public sector, work to increase investments by the private sector, engage philanthropy to deploy its capital more aggressively, justly and creatively, invite and challenge businesses and foundations to see the deployment of their capital, not as charity, but as investments in the common good that may have a wide range of returns, traditional and non-traditional, and in some cases, challenge them to see their investments as reparative justice. Challenge and change, thinking and systems. You are all innovators in this room and you are doing that. A good example is 2020 HABC winner, Center for New York City Neighborhoods, with underwriting for good, working to expand access to credit by looking beyond traditional metrics of credit worthiness to increase access to home ownership for BIPOC families in New York State, using alternative credit data to demonstrate borrowers' ability to repay a home mortgage. They are talking to the state mortgage agency, Fannie Mae, HUD, and others to do what I like to call build it into the code. Embed this into how folks do business every day. This is the role that I believe we are called to play, so let's play it. We are not called, my friends, to be a muddling people, going along to get along, hoping not to offend, hoping not to upset passive and scared people, if the wolves in our ecosystem sense that, the folks that they will rob and cheat and steal and discriminate and lock folks out of opportunity, wolves go hard. So shepherds can't be soft. But this leads to my final point. What you do every day matters to people. So show up, rain or shine. Last week I had the pleasure of attending a grand opening ceremony by an organization called So Others Might Eat here in Washington, D.C. And they opened a building on North Capitol Street with 136 affordable homes along with services targeted to extremely low income and the formerly homeless. And a resident gave his testimony and he talked about his struggle with drugs and homelessness over the years. And he thanked So Others Might Eat for their assistance to help him work through his various challenges. And he spoke about how important that help was. But what struck me, Krista, was how he began his remarks. My name is Garrett Young, and I am from Ward 8. Garrett Young, Ward 8. A person with a name, with an identity, a place where he was from, not just a statistic. A real man with a name and a story. Some of his story is sad. Some of it is frustrating, some of it is upsetting, but it is also a story of perseverance and hope and opportunity and grace. 
and some played a critical role in the best parts of Mr. Young's story. The work they do every day matters to Mr. Young. The work that you do every day matters to a Mr. Young and your community. Now, stick with me just a few more moments as I close. Recently, I'm a member of the 100 Black Men of Greater Washington, and we had the kickoff cookout for our Saturday Leadership Academy mentoring effort. We work with 7th to 12th grade black boys here in the region providing caring college and older adult mentors. And it was a very sunny week, but then there was predictions of rain on Saturday. And Saturday came and parents and some students were calling and they were asking the night before, will the event take place? Will the event take place? Well, I knew because our chapter president is a former Marine and our mentoring committee chairman spent 20 years in the Army that we were going to be having the event. <laughs> but as a founding member of the chapter, I was asked to share a word with the assembled group. So I did so just literally as the rains were ending and people were taking their ponchos off. And I thought and I said to the people and I say to you in a city where thousands literally Thousands of young black boys and men have been murdered in the nation's capital in the last 20 years in a city where 64% of the carjackings take place by youth, by youth carrying guns. We can't afford to let some rain keep us from doing the good work. It doesn't deter the shooters. It doesn't deter the carjackers. So why should it deter us? So for you, for us, if we are playing the role of a committed shepherd, we must show up rain or shine. The wolves that would do what the wolves do, they don't let rain stop them. When Mr. Garrett Young is homeless, he is homeless, rain or shine. When folks are being denied mortgages, they're being denied mortgages, rain or shine. When folks can't find affordable rental housing, they can't find it, rain or shine. When there's not enough of the right kind of capital available to make these projects work, that is happening, rain or shine. When the planet suffers because of human influence that is literally gonna destroy our way of life, that is happening, rain or shine, please, Please, please play your role, rain or shine. You spent hours working on a grant application for money that would provide critical support to help you do your work and scale an ideal, and you got denied. I know it sucks. I've been there, but keep working, rain or shine. Once again, you got to organize, folks, and go down and show up and educate elected officials on the needed land use changes that promote equity or higher budget levels for affordable housing, or improvements in the efficiencies of permitting and approvals. And I know it sucks. And I know that it ought to be self-evident to them that this is what we need, but keep showing up, rain or shine. It's hard to find funding from the government or foundations to pay for the critical services that help the Garrett Youngs of the world that have experienced real trauma and real bias. And we know as we jump through all these hoops, why do we have to do it? I know it sucks, but keep showing up, rain or shine. Keep showing up, celebrate the wins, kick the dirt on the losses, then buckle up and keep at it. Because as my late father used to say, son, that's why they call it work. Garrett Young from Ward 8 needs you to show up. The wolves are nipping at his heels every day. He needs, the nation needs the good shepherds to play their role, to push the boundaries of infinite possibilities of changing minds and systems with whatever time we have. When we redeem the time with the courage of our convictions and our calling, the work that all of you do in this room, that we do, matters to people. Don't ever forget it. So keep showing up, rain or shine, and let us make this world a better place, a more just place than when we found it. So when we leave, people will know that the good shepherds were here. God bless you.